уважаемые поклонники смешанных боевых единоборств и исторического фехтования, представляем вашему вниманию бой по правилам исторического фехтования. В синем углу рейджа спортсмен из города Калининград представляет клуб «Западная башня». Встречайте! Евгений Беденко! В красном углу рейджа спортсмен из клуба «Боярд» представляет город-герой Москва. Встречайте! Иван Васильевич! Спортсмен в синего рейджа представляет янтарный запад России, город Калининград. Спортсмену 31 год, вес 74,8 кг, рост 176 сантиметров. Профессиональный рекорд. В семи поединках всего одно поражение. Победитель турнира «Белый замок». Серебряный призер чемпионата мира «Битва наций». Победитель международных зарубежных турниров по историческому фехтованию. Рыцарь из города Калининград представляет клуб «Западная башня». Аплодисменты Евгений Беденко! И его соперник в красном углу. Ему 32 года, вес 75,5 килограммов, рост 173 сантиметра, профессиональный рекорд. 11 побед, всего два поражения. Он двукратный чемпион России, вице-чемпион турнира «Белый замок», призер чемпионата мира «Битва наций», победитель турниров «Рыцарский вызов» и «Поле Куликова». Иван Васильев, Боярд, город Москва! Уважаемые рыцари, защищая честь вашей прекрасной дамы, помните о судье, он без оружия. Человек ослепительного благородства Вячеслав Киселев, Санкт-Петербург, Россия. Пойти на середину. Итак, рыцари, правила помним, не нарушаем. Работаем три раунда по три минуты. Колющие удары, запрещенные удары в парк запрещены. Внимательно слушаем мои команды, беремся честно. Ударили мячами, щитами. Разошлись по углам. Судья, время. Готов. Готов. Бой. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, for a fight between Eugene Bedenko and Ivan Vasiliev. And this is the first fight of the official M1 Medieval project. This night fighting project started by M1. It's three three-minute rounds. Uh, it's always a feeling out process in the beginning before strategy is really taken into effect. Bedenko in the red is a welterweight who represents Night Fight Club, Zapandia, Zapandia Bashia. For 
people that have not yet figured out how to this out, uh, these are really real swords. So we have to put the accent that the, the damage are very real. The armor that they're wearing are also very real. But interestingly enough, over the past 10 years, the armor has gotten lighter. So for someone who's well trained and has the necessary stamina, apparently, and I've spoken to several of the knights uh, over the past few days, apparently they don't really feel the armor when it's on. And if you use it correctly, it actually minimizes any sort of trauma that you receive. They don't complain about all sorts of things like uh, general injuries that MMA fighters get, uh, ACL injuries, knee injuries, uh, hands, hand injuries. They rarely complain about such things. What they do complain about is if they don't use their helmet properly, there could be some trauma. Ladies and gentlemen, there are takedowns here, there are shots, you can punch, you can elbow, you can do all sorts of things and the fight can be finished. Whilst a lot of these fights do go to decision, these two fighters in particular have had a history of finishing fights, believe it or not. In red, Ivan Vasiv is a two-time Russian champion, won in both 2013 and 14. He's the vice champion of White Castle Tournament and a multiple prize holder of the Clash of Nations. And he holds an 11-2 professional record. It should be noted that his opponent in the red, Eugene, is actually slightly less experienced. Holds a 6 and 1 record. But he's also won the Clash of Nations tournament where he's also a vice champion. So this is very interesting. Two Russian champions, and it's very clear that they're both very talented. The use of the sword, which is also blunt. You should note that it's a blunt instrument. Stop! That's it, ladies and gentlemen. It's three three minute rounds. Back for the second round after an entertaining first round of action. Crowd really enjoys watching these nice fights. It's very new to them here, but they definitely enjoy it. These are very good. Spectacular. Special attraction. As you can see there, that there was a strike to the helmet, and to explain the point system a little better, strong strikes using the sword or the shield. If it hits the if it hits the armor, the referee can award, and there's judges on the side, the referee can award a point. Takedown, as we saw in the last round, is worth five points. There are four judges at ringside judging it, and if, the, and if for any reason we end up with a draw, split between two, ju two judges on one side, two judges on the other, there is a fifth judge who decides who is the victor. You can see the players are a lot more comfortable now. They're getting a little fancier with their shots. Even attempting a spinning back kick. There was a spinning back kick, there was a spinning back fist earlier. It's getting very interesting now. It's surprising that they can pull up these moves even though they have those armors. I guess, as we were mentioning, that the uh, light armors are, are helping with those moves. Well, you still need some extreme stamina. You need to be extremely fit to be able to wear all that and still maneuver for nine minutes. It's just... 
it must be very difficult to read the... I'm sure, I'm sure years in they're used to it. Many of these fighters have been have been fencing and doing all sorts of historical fencing for 10 to 15 years now. Many of them started in, in junior high, for instance. They take an interest in it and then it just becomes a hobby to them. I think with the new popularity of, uh, for example, uh, movies like Game of Thrones or uh, uh, movies uh, Lord of the Rings, I think maybe the sport is now coming back. And uh, as we see, the level is pretty high, so it's impressive to see uh, here right now tonight in Moscow. Of course, it was M1 Global founder Vadim Finkelstein who came up with the idea to introduce M1 Medieval. After he joined forces with Atem last year. It was very interesting to see on M1, on his 50th birthday for M1 Global 50, it was the first night fight. That's where it took place. And it was, it blew fans away at that point. So since then, he has decided to start up M1 Medieval, which at this rate, we're going to be seeing more about eight to 10 fights of this, of this kind over the year. And over the coming years, we're going to start seeing weight classes develop and championship belts and all sorts of things. Believe it or not, at one point, it could become its own uh, its own faction, its own uh, affiliate of M1. Yes, it's a good. This is the last and final round of this fight. While many might be watching this right now and not taking it very seriously, it should be noted that several of the top gyms in both St. Petersburg and Moscow have started to implement fencing into their, into the, incorporate fencing into the preparation for their fighters. So MMA fighters, whether they are competing in M1 Medieval or not, which it generally will not be, will still be doing all sorts of fencing to work on their agility, stamina, dexterity, hand-eye coordination. Vasiliev successfully uh, attempted the takedown here. Referee stops them, stands them up. That'll be the second one. If we're going on points, it looks like Evgeny is doing uh, the better here. Hand-eye coordination is just so impressive. Their, their ability to attack and defend at once, it's just very interesting to see. For a sport that's so foreign to us right now, it's just very fascinating. Penang Ol into a good shot to the head. Seems to be resting in the corner. Will Vasiliev take advantage of it? Benenko seems really, really tired in this third round. Vasil looks like he's going to take advantage in the third round. He should not let him rest. He should, he should attack right now. Referee calls a stoppage. The gloves needs to be adjusted. And in the other corner, the, the cornerman is actually using the shield as a fan for Evgeny. I think this little post will help both fighters gain some energy to finish this round. Oh, I'm sure they weren't complaining about the few seconds they got to rest there. Yeah, 
should be noted, ladies and gentlemen, that shield strikes to the face do count for the same points that a strike with a sword do. Bedenko just landed one of those shields attack. Vasiliev is moving forward. What a strike there. Both fighters studying each other, trying to catch your breath. So what do you think, Yuri? Is this something that interests you? Something this, you'd like to try? This is definitely not something I would like to try, but to watch a fight like this, for me, this is very entertaining. This is very special. I like uh, this medieval type of fighting. Um, I'm really, really happy that M1 is bringing this back. I think this is really spectacular for all the people watching at home and watching here in the audience. Oh, big knees here landed by uh, Vasiliev. Referee's very to stop the action. As we're saying, there's a lot of MMA strikes going on in this fight as well. Incorporating all sorts of elements, fencing, historical, uh, historical fencing and MMA. And this is the end of the round and the end of the fight. Uh, let's see what the judges have on their scorecards. Уважаемые дамы и господа, решение судейской коллегии со счетом 58-55 в этом поединке победу одержал спортсмен из города Калининград, клуб «Западная башня» Евгений Беденко! И набрал 58 баллов. Наши поздравления!
Да, да. Рядом со мной Иван Васильев. Увы, Иван уступил сегодня. Вань, как ты думаешь, что произошло, из-за чего э, ты проиграл? Ну, честно говоря, у меня нет такого вот впечатления, что я прям проиграл. Вот, у меня был неудачный первый раунд, э, но по моим ощущениям второй и третий я все-таки вел. Вот, но судьи решили иначе как бы. Ну, разрыв минимальный, 55-58, всего три очка. Э, ну, ты уже понял для себя, над чем нужно работать, э, что нужно подтянуть? Ну, примерно, да. Есть такие... Есть намерки, да. Расскажешь или это тайна? Ну, пока... Пока я, короче, не расскажу. Ну, спасибо тебе, все равно классный бой. Прежде всего поздравляю тебя с победой. Отличный бой. Мне кажется, встряхнулись немножко зрители, потому что я так слышал, что вначале были какие-то смешки, когда вы вышли в доспеха. А потом, когда уже началось вот это ваше месило, вот искры полетели. Уже народ понял, что это вообще не шутки и не детский вид спорта. Расскажи о своих впечатлениях. Что-то у тебя не веселое лицо. Не рад ты победе? Конечно, победе рад. Ну, не рад, там, как раз, лично недоволен. Ничего не показал толком. То есть, как на инстинктах, как подрались. Белая выносливость немножко я задышался и уже не мог изобразить красиво. Как дела с твоей аллергией? Я помню, ты жаловался на, на здоровье. Возможно, может быть, из-за этого. Как бы, и, и в интервью тогда я говорил, что больше переживаю даже за эмоциональное состояние. Вот, поэтому и недоволен, оно немного меня подкачало. Поэтому бой был качественно равный. Не чувствую, что я выиграл. Где теперь мы можем увидеть твой бой? К чему готовишься? В данный момент только в 12 в мае все. Ну что уже осталось-то? Ну что, будем заболеть за тебя на B12. Спасибо, классный бой.